morning, a special welcome is extended to all friends and visitors worshipping with us today. You are invited to Holy Communion. In Holy Communion, we receive the true body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. All who are baptized are invited to receive communion. The watchword for the second Sunday of the Trinity is taken from Matthew 11, verse 28. Christ says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Um, there's two announcements. Um, Mushroom curry and rice is for sale on the 25th of June, but uh, please have your order in by this coming Friday at the very latest, please. And then the bazaar envelopes, if you have a print envelope, um, they are available in the foyer. Thank you. Good morning. We celebrate this morning's service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we are reminded that we, each and every one of us, is invited to the banquet of life, the feast where we may celebrate God's love and forgiveness, a feast to which we may come as we are, a feast we celebrate each and every time we come together at the Lord's table for Holy Communion, where we receive God's forgiveness, experience fellowship with our Lord and with one another, where we remember the love of God in Christ and where we get new hope and strength for what may lie ahead of us. So let us accept this invitation today, opening our hearts for God's Word and turning towards Him in prayer as we now speak the words of Psalm 36. I will begin with the first lines and ask you to please answer with the lines next to the congregation. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. Our precious peoples we ask that, O God, all be your friends and refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river, river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life, in your life O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright at heart. Amen. Amen.
you that you have called us into your presence, saying, Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And we pray, may we experience your peace and be filled with new strength through the fellowship we may have with you and with one another here today. We ask, build us up, encourage us, and comfort us through your Spirit, that we may become a reflection of your love here, where you have placed us to be your church, a reflection of your kingdom within this world of ours. Amen. Ask the children to come forward, you know, the parents can come along if they want to. I might have a great opportunity. The Gospel is written in chapter 14 of the Gospel according to St. Luke. One of the delegates on hearing this said to Jesus, Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all about began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have just been married, 
and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to the slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town, and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and the lanes, and compel people to come in, so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who are who were invited will taste my dinner. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Dear congregation, today we just heard the invitation of God that people sometimes tend to ignore because they are just too busy with more important stuff in life than going to some feast, some celebration. It is a story that warns those who think that they are the chosen one but end up actually being the lost ones. Because their focus has shifted away from God to themselves, thus missing out on a festive life in the presence of God. However, that is not the focus of our sermon text for today. No, because this text doesn't actually address those who have missed out on the invitation, but rather it addresses those who have accepted the invitation. Those who have come to the feast and who now celebrate their newfound life in Christ. Like, for example, the Corinthians back in those days, who were a great example of God's transforming power within the Hellenistic world, in which many gods were worshipped and many different pagan rituals were followed. Amongst this, the Corinthian congregation stood up for their faith in Christ. However, soon the Corinthians started to become somewhat arrogant within their newfound faith. They boasted about all the spiritual gifts that they had amongst them, especially the speaking in tongues, that is, speaking in a language that no human can understand. And its purpose is to strengthen the individual's relationship with God. However, what happened then was that those who spoke in tongues started to look down upon those who didn't. And this obviously caused conflict and disunity amongst the members of the congregation. And thus Paul finally steps in. And with today's text addresses the Corinthians and also us and everyone who has already accepted the Lord's invitation and who now have to ask themselves, what do we do now? After having accepted this invitation, what does it mean for our daily lives? What does being part of the called ones, those who have been gathered from all walks of life and on our guests at God's banquet mean for you and me? What does it mean for our daily life, for our interaction with one another, how we treat each other, our fellow believers, believers with whom we sit in the same pew, for example, or work together, or share our home with? And what does it mean for us within the wider society out there? How do we live out our faith amongst the people that haven't yet answered God's call, the so-called Ratsitters, who still think about coming to the party or not, or those who have just lost all interest in God's call because of those who are already at the party and now seem as if they don't really want anyone else to join in in the fun. Yes, what do we do with those? Those are the kind of questions Paul addresses in his first letter to the Corinthians, where he writes them in chapter 14 as follows. Pursue love and strive for the spiritual gifts and especially that you may prophesy. For those who speak in a tongue do not speak to other people but to God. For nobody understands them since they are speaking mysteriously in the Spirit. On the other hand, those who prophesy speak to other people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. Those who speak in a tongue build up themselves, but those who prophesy build up the church. 
Now, I would like all of you to speak in tongues, but even more to prophesy. So, it is with yourselves. Since you are eager for spiritual gifts, strive to excel in them for building up the church. If, therefore, the whole church comes together and all speak in tongues, and outsiders, unbelievers, enter, will they not say that you are all out of your mind? But if all prophesy, an unbeliever or outsider who enters is reproved by all and called to account by all, after the secrets of the unbeliever's heart are disclosed, that person will bow down before God and worship Him, declaring, God is really among you. It's not the complicated text, but basically what Paul does here, he lays down in this text two simple yet foundational principles by which Christians should live by. Firstly, he says, pursue love as if your life depends on it. In other words, Paul says, wherever, whatever you do, just as God has met you with his unconditional love, in the same way you should also love one another. And secondly, he says, strive for the spiritual gifts. With this, Paul ultimately says, don't try to do anything on your own and out of your own strength, but instead let God work in and through you. Everyone has been given spiritual gifts that should be used for nothing else than for the furtherance of the Church of Christ here on earth. And Paul obviously firmly believes that it is God's Spirit, that God's Spirit works in us in many different ways. For example, as mentioned in his text, also through speaking of tongues. But here in our text he says that the most important gift that should be pursued and practiced by believers is the gift of prophecy. Because, as he writes, prophecy builds up the church as a whole and not only the individual, because he writes, those who prophesy speak to other people for the upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. Please note, prophecy in this context has thus little to do with a supernatural vision of the future, but rather it is God's way of speaking the truth through us, through you and me, into our present day reality. Telling the truth about Christ and the good news about His love and His forgiveness. The gift of prophecy that instead of inciting fear in us, wants to build up people by inviting them into God's kingdom, God's kingdom of love and acceptance, where you can be yourself, where you don't have to keep any secrets, where you can let go of your guilt and your sin, where your tears will be wiped away as God himself comforts you with understanding, love and compassion. That is the kind of prophecy Paul is talking about, a spiritual gift that is there to build up, encourage and comfort all who hear the truth about God. The God who so loved the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may live and have life eternal. That means whatever we do as a church and as St. Cruz's congregation, we are encouraged to let the Spirit of God move us and touch us so that we may find ways and means to build up each other instead of ever looking down on others just because maybe they didn't tick all the right boxes in our acceptance form. And instead, we are encouraged each and every day, wherever we may be, to ask ourselves, how can I today build up those around me? How can I show them the way, the truth and the life that is freely on offer through faith in Christ? 
How can I comfort those of whom I know are in need of consolation and support? How can I speak the truth about God and bring love and forgiveness and hope to the unloved, the unforgiven, and the hopeless? Yes, how can I pursue the spiritual gift of prophecy? Because that is what we, all of us, who have already accepted God's invitation, our courage, her, and actually urge to do, to bring, always bring God back into the mix of things. To always pursue them and strive for the spiritual gifts and especially that we may prophesy. Then, as Paul writes, even the unbeliever will bow down before God and worship Him, declaring God is really enough. Yes, because God wants the Church of Christ and every congregation, no matter how big or small, to be a living reflection of His glorious kingdom of love here on earth. God wants the Church to be the place where life is celebrated in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Where acceptance is celebrated, where love is celebrated, where forgiveness is celebrated, where peace is celebrated, where hope is celebrated at the banquet of life, life here and now amidst our often harsh realities. And so Paul does not only speak to the elect few, who have a special gift of prophecy, but instead he invites all, each and every one of us, to pursue this wonderful spiritual gift for the sake of the building of the Church of Christ, so that we may show the world what it means, what it truly means to celebrate life, fulfilled life, at the banquet of God. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever.
have invited us into your presence so that we may have fellowship with you and with fellow believers. We pray help us that we may also continue to extend your invitation to others by sharing your love with them. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and we pray stay with us even when we leave the path of which you want us to walk on. God, we thank you for your love and pray fill us with hope when we feel hopeless and give us the courage to reach out to the people who feel unloved and excluded from society. Almighty God, thank you for our daily bread and everything you have created by which you sustain our lives and we pray hear the pleas of the hungry and neglected and show us ways and means how we can help them. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our health and we pray for all those who are sick, who battle with cancer, who struggle with depression, who are fighting the coronavirus or any other disease. Be with them. Touch them with your healing hand and lead us to them so that we can share your light with them in these times of darkness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our beautiful country that is full of color and diversity and we pray, show us a way how we can all stand together to create, with your help, a better future for all. Lord, we thank you for our families and we pray for all children that they may get to know you and the love you have for them through their parents and through us as your congregation. God, Heavenly Father, we stand before you now with open hands and hearts as you invite us to celebrate with you the gift of life which you have given us through the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we pray, strengthen our faith and fill us with hope as we receive bread and wine out of your hand. Amen. Now let us turn to God and prepare for Holy Communion as we sing Create in Me a Pure Heart.
Lord Jesus Christ. On the night when he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after the supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood, the covenant which is shed for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus says, Come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come now, for everything is ready. See and taste how good the Lord is. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We thank you for the gift of forgiveness and the strength and hope that we receive through your body and blood broken and shed for us out of pure love and compassion. Thank you also for the fellowship we could have with you and with one another as we gathered here at your table. Let your love grow within us and help us be witnesses of your love and mercy wherever we may go, being filled with your spirit, bringing the living water to those around us. Amen. Please be seated for the next hymn.